In this video, we're gonna run through a complete Filmic Pro tutorial showing you step-by-step -step how to unlock DSLR-like settings on your iPhone or Android smartphone camera and exactly how to use them to shoot your videos like a pro. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. We help entrepreneurs and business owners amplify their business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything that we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Filmic Pro is one of our top picks for best iPhone and Android camera apps. It's packed with a ton of features and it instantly unlocks DSLR-like settings on your iOS or Android camera. So at first glance though, there is a huge range of features in there that can definitely be overwhelming, but with just a basic understanding and a simple process, you can get some amazing results shooting video with your Android or your iPhone. Now we did a Filmic Pro walkthrough a little while back, but there's been some big changes since then. So in this video, we're gonna do a full update. We're gonna cover everything you need to get started and start getting awesome results with the latest Filmic Pro version, step by step. And while you're watching, make sure to let me know in the comments, what's your number one camera setting that you couldn't do without on your iPhone or Android? And remember to take a look at what the rest of the community is posting as well, because there's always some nuggets of gold down there. And as an added bonus, once we're done with the walkthrough, I'm gonna cover a bonus tip and show you how you can easily monitor your shot while you're shooting with your phone's rear camera. So the one facing away from you. This one is gonna make everything a ton easier. All right, so here we are in Filmic Pro. Now just looking at this interface straight out of the bat, you can see on the right hand side, we've got our audio bars. So you can actually see how loud the volume is coming through on our recording and also that there is actually audio coming through, which is a great tool to have if you're gonna be creating videos so that you've got that reassurance that your audio is actually working. So we'll start off by going through the interface really quickly. We've got your big record button down the bottom here. You've also got a play button, settings. Here you've got your battery indicator and your storage indicator too, showing you how much you've got left of both. You've got your time code or your counter to show you how long you're recording for. Over here, you've got your current frames per second and your video quality displayed there. So you can see it says 25 frames per second, 4K currently. The next one across the A is for some advanced filming options. I'm sure that's not what the A stands for, but in there you'll get things like peaking and you'll get some other displays that you can overlay on Filmic Pro while you're filming to get some more advanced control. The next one along the round circle that looks like a target is where you can control your focus and your exposure and lock that down and set everything to manual. And the three colors there is to adjust the white balance or the color temperature of your shot which you can see is also displayed on the side here at currently 62,500 Kelvin. Now everything here right now is just as it is when you open the app and everything is totally set to auto. So the first thing I'd recommend you do when you open the app is to go into settings and make sure that everything is set up correctly. Now there's a heap of settings in here and we definitely aren't gonna run through them all, but I am gonna run through the most important ones for you to set. So the first place you should go is to frame rate. So if we tap on that, you can see in here, we've got 24 frames per second, 25 and 30 that we can pick at the current resolution that is set for this phone. You can see we've got grayed out options there for 48, 50, 60, 120 and 240. Now, obviously if we change the resolution, the recording quality, then we also have control then to it change the frame rate as well. But really anything above 30 frames per second could actually be classed as slow motion. So for most videos you're gonna be creating, you're going to want to use one of these three frame rates, 24, 25, or 30. For most videos that you're going to be creating, I would say to stick to 30 frames per second if you're in the US. If you're in Australia or Europe, then set your phone to 25 frames per second. This is gonna help you remove or reduce the chance of any flickering happening from any lights that are in your scene. So I'm in Australia right now, so we're gonna set it to 25. And once you've selected that, you can just tap anywhere on the screen to go back to the previous menu. The next setting you need to look at is the resolution. So this is the actual quality of the files that you're going to be capturing. Across the top, you've got the different aspect ratios or that you can actually crop the footage down so that it is square or so it's got the black bars if you're creating a more cinematic style video. But the default here should be 16 by nine. But the settings you're gonna to wanna to change here is where it says 4K 2160p. Now, obviously with this phone, it supports 4K, but we can also change this resolution. We've got the options of 3K, 2K, 1080p, 720p, and 540p. 
Now ideally here, you would wanna be using at least 1080p, but if your phone supports it, then you could go up to 4K. This is obviously gonna give you a higher quality video, but it's also gonna chew up some more storage space as well. It also sounds like we've got a couple of birds in the background. So once you've got your resolution picked, 4K, then you can choose the actual bit rate or the quality of that 4K recording. So if we go back through here and see, economy is the lowest quality setting we have. You've then got standard, filmic quality, and filmic extreme. Now filmic extreme is the best quality that you can actually get in this app. And it's actually in a lot of cases going to give you a much better quality video than the built-in camera apps will on your phone. So if you've got the storage space available and you want the best quality recordings out of your phone's camera, then you'll wanna be using Filmic Extreme. So we'll tap on the screen to get back out of that. Also in here, you've got control over your audio. And you get to choose if you wanna use your camera microphone or if you do have an external microphone plugged in, then you can pick external microphone as well. And you've also got control over the quality. Once again, of your audio recording, I'd suggest leaving this at 48 kilohertz. But if you wanna record your videos without audio, then you can turn that on there as well. Go back out of this. Now, if you wanna to switch to the front facing camera, you can do that down here as well. There is the camera button that'll swap that out for you. And you've also got the option down here to turn on or off optical image stabilization or stabilization if it's built into your phone. Once you've got all your settings locked down the way that you like them, you can actually come up here to presets and you can save presets in here. So you can see in the presets here, I've got a preset for JB4K. So that would be my preset with everything set to the highest quality for 4K recordings because that will be the default that I'm going to use for most recordings. So you can save your presets in there. You might have one saved for 1080p, one for 4K. It really depends on what you're looking to achieve with the videos you're creating. So we'll go back out of here and back out of here again. Okay, so now that we've gone through the settings, the next thing you wanna do before you start recording is to set up your actual shot. And we've got a square and a circle on screen. So this square here, you can actually pick it up and you can move it around. This is your focus square. So it's gonna focus it on whatever you drop it on. So if I put my hand in front of the screen here now, if I drop the square on my hand, it's going to change the focus so it's focusing on my hand. Now, if we actually press on that square, you can see it's gone red now. When I move my hand away, then that isn't going to change. That's locked the focus point at that point. So that's an easy way that you can lock down your focus. Now, exactly the same with the circle. So the circle is your exposure or your brightness of your shot. So whatever I let this go on here, it's going to adjust the brightness accordingly. So if we move it over here, you can see it darkens the shot down. If I move it back here, then it's going to adjust for wherever I've left it. And if I tap it again, you can see it's gone red. It's now locked in the exposure and the focus at that point. So as things change here, it's not going to automatically adjust, which is really, really powerful for creating professional looking videos. You don't want the light to be constantly changing and automatically adjusting as you move your camera around or as things change in your scene. And obviously if you wanna go back to auto, then you just tap on the circles or the square and everything will go back to normal. So in this case here, if we were filming this shot here, we would probably wanna lock down our focus on the chair here. So we'd move it there and we would tap on the screen to lock it at that point. And exactly the same for the exposure. So we might wanna expose for the chair here. So brighten it up a bit and tap on that once we're happy. Now our shot is locked off at those settings. So that's the most basic way that you can do it. Now you can actually go into a lot more control on those. You can either long press on either the circle or the square to bring up more advanced options, or you can come down the bottom here to this target, this circle with the smaller circle inside it. If we tap on that, then you can see that we get these sliders on either side. So now that we've locked our exposure, we can actually come across here and swipe this slider up and down to brighten and to darken our shot, to really dial in and get the look that we're after. And exactly the same with the focus, we've got a focus slider here that we can adjust manually the focus as well. So if I put my, put my hand back in here, I can adjust it until my hand is in focus, let it go, pull it away, and everything is locked off at that point. So that's really, really powerful, especially to have these controls on our smartphones. And the last key setting here that I'd highly recommend you lock down as well. So we've done the focus, we've done the exposure or the brightness so that those aren't gonna change. The last one is your color temperature. 
you'll want to kick that into manual mode as well because that's another one that could automatically change as things change in your scene. So if a cloud came over, it could definitely change the whole look and feel of your video. So if we tap on these three circles down the bottom here, then you can see here it's doing an automatic adjustment. We're currently on AWB, automatic white balance. If we press on that, you can see that we've locked in the white balance. If we're happy with that automatic reading, we've now locked it at that point. Now, obviously you've got a heap of controls in here to change that look up. We've got other presets down the bottom here that we can cycle through. And you can see the scene totally changes based on which one of these presets we are picking. You can also save your own in here as presets as A and B and customize those up for how you'd like to look. But what I recommend you start is with auto white balance because it normally does a pretty damn good job of analyzing your scene or your shot and getting that white balance correct. But you can see here that it's giving you the color temperature. It's currently reading around 6,280 and it's fluctuating a little bit. That's that automatic adjustment because we haven't locked this down. But you can actually grab these sliders and you can make manual adjustments yourself. So if we want it to be a cooler shot, we'd put it down and add more blue in. If we want to add more warmth into the shot, then we would lift this up. And once you've got it about where you would want it, then you can just let that slider go. Tap off the screen and your shot then is locked down. Now, obviously for this shot, it was setting with my hand in focus here. So we can tap back on the screen here and obviously readjust our focus back to the couch there. So that's how simple it is. Then obviously all you need to do when you wanna record is to press the record button down the bottom right hand corner and you can see that the recording timer is counting up. What I really like about this app too, besides the fact that you can monitor your audio while you're recording, is that it's clearly showing you how much battery you've got left and how much storage you've got left. And obviously because these are our phones, these are things that can run out pretty quick. So it's awesome to have that there to make it so easy while you're actually recording your videos. So that's a quick walkthrough on Filmic Pro and all the settings you need to know to get the best results out of it. Now this was filmed on an Android device. The settings and everything are exactly the same on iOS as well. So that's a complete walkthrough with everything you need to know to start getting great results using Filmic Pro on either your iPhone or your Android device. Now, if you are gonna be creating videos like this where you are presenting to camera and you're gonna be shooting them by yourself. So you don't have anyone there to help you and if you wanna use the primary camera, the main high quality camera on your smartphone, then that can be rather difficult because the screen is gonna be facing away from you. So it's gonna be hard to monitor that you actually are recording, that everything looks the way you want it, and that there's nothing changing or distracting in your shot while you're actually recording. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. If you have an iPhone or you're using iOS devices, then there is an app called Filmic Remote, which obviously is gonna tie directly into Filmic Pro. So what you do is you install the Filmic Remote on an additional iOS device, maybe an iPad or a second phone if you've got one. I don't know how many people have two iPhones, but maybe some of you do. A second iOS device, put the app on there, and you're able to see what's going on or mirror your phone screen to that device. And you can also control it as well, so you can remotely trigger the recording and check that everything is how you'd like. Now, if you don't have an iOS device or multiple iOS devices, then you can also use a piece of software called Reflector, and that will let you wirelessly monitor your phone screen, iOS or Android, to a computer, either a Mac or a PC. Now we do have a video talking through that process of setting up Reflector and how it works in a lot more detail. I'll put it up in the cards now, but in that video, we've also covered some other options for you as well. So if Reflector or Filmic Pro Remote don't work for you, then make sure you check out that video because there's a lot more options in there as well. So now that you've got your filming sorted, it's time to turn your iPhone or your Android device into the ultimate video creation powerhouse. So check out the video linked on screen to see our review of the best video editing apps on both platforms that are gonna give you desktop-like editing functions right on your smart device. And I'll see you soon.